Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Ober and we are, our team is putting together a medical grade non-woven filter mask, which I'm going to tell you about today. Um, we are working up at Seabury Hall in Lockwell. Um, and so how this started is that I was connected with uh, Dr. Sonia Gupta um, and she connected me with um, Russell and Dr. Van Dyken. Russell was trying to see if um, a more robust filter mask could be made for our medical providers. And so um, he brought to me a, a mask to see if I could kind of replicate uh, and uh, reproduce as, as much as possible using these materials that he provided for me. Um, so th there's, here's a couple examples of what are called the N95 masks. You know, they come in different shapes, right? Different sizes. And this is the one that, that um, Russell brought to me to see if we could replicate the size and the functionality as much as possible. And of course, you know, we're not capable of making an N95 mask. It's just this is the sample that we used. So we um, just sliced it open a little bit here to see what the materials are inside of it. And there's this outer uh, waterproof layer and there's two layers of filter. And then there's this inner paper layer. And then there's a... Um, piece of foam for the nose and a piece of wire in here and then some elastic. So we worked on several prototypes and ended up with this as our final prototype right here. And this is how it looks on the inside. It's got a piece of foam in here for the nose and all the different materials which I'll go over with you all the different layers. So again, this is this is not an N95 mask, but it's a, a really good mask. It's close. Um, and uh, we had it uh, looked at by uh, doctors at Kaiser Permanente Maui Clinic. Um, they actually did a fit test with it. It did not pass the fit test, but they still like it. Even though it didn't pass, they still want us to produce it. So these are the materials that it's made out of. And I should say that um, all of our materials um, are purchased using donations from the community um, that we have raised th this money. And all these masks are free to our medical healthcare providers. Everything is free. Uh, so here's what, what it's made out of. So the outer layer is this, um, it can be either one of these surgical coats. And this surgical coat uh, comes from Cardinal Health. It's a level three AAMI standard with a liquid barrier. Um, so it has that liquid barrier right on it that, uh, keeps it waterproof and antiviral. The other option that we were given is this. It's another type of material just like this. It's just another option that works well. And then um, our interior layer is uh, this right here, which is a uh, 3M uh, 1500 uh, filter that filters out bacteria and so forth and virus. And we'll show you that in our filter room. And that is two layers of that uh, in between. So first of all is this layer and then two layers of the filter. And then what's on the very inside of it is this, which is a non-woven, what they call a paper rag. Um, there's probably different terms for it, but basically it's non-woven. And uh, then, you know, for the uh, nose piece, you can use uh, just some flat foam like this. You can also use foam like this, which is this big roll here. And then there's a piece of wire that's in between to help make it so that it will bend. And so when it's all done, this is what it looks like. It opens up like this. So we have, um, as I said, we're manufacturing at Seabury Hall. Um, we have tried to create a really sterile and controlled environment for this manufacturing. Um, because as of right now, our understanding is that these um, things cannot be reused. Um, and so I know there's people all over the world trying to figure out if this type of thing can be sterilized. So hopefully someone will figure that out. But for now, we're just going to be as, use as many precautions as we can. So, for example, today our volunteers here are um, cutting out elastic and cutting out... Um, the filters and um, we are all wearing masks, um, gloves and scrubs. Um, all our volunteers are screened by our volunteer coordinator for um, if, you know, if they've been ill or anyone in their home has been ill. 
um, if they've been traveling, we just are screening everybody to make sure that all of our volunteers are as healthy as possible. So um, our masks that are, are, the first batch of masks that are done are gonna be going to the Kaiser Permanente Maui Lani Clinic. Um, other doctors in private practice here are reaching out to us and we'll be happy to provide them masks as well. And of course, we're happy to provide them to the hospital if the hospital asks us for them. So um, we're gonna just take a little walk uh, through and show you the other rooms. This is our cutting room where we're doing all of our cutting. And now we're gonna head over to our filter room and show you what's going on there. Uh, so the filters, you know, they come in a, in a box and they have to be completely pulled apart. And um, then uh, marked because they have a particular right and wrong side to them, which I'm going to show you in here. And here we're going to come into the filter room now. And um, here is one of our volunteers who is pulling apart the uh, filters. So they come in this box and um, they have to be completely pulled apart. And uh, I can show you on the side, there's a little arrow here on the side that shows you the, the, the direction of the filter. So when we pull them apart, we make a mark um, to show the right side so that when you assemble them, we put them together correctly. They have to be so that the, the arrows are facing out because we're putting two filters in each one. So after they're pulled apart, they come over here to be ironed um, so that they can be uh, sent over to our cutting area. We take a, a piece of clean muslin that has been washed and we lay it on top of the filter fabric and we press it so that it's pressed. And you can't press too hard because you'll melt it. So you just have to press it just enough for the cutters. Now we're gonna head over to the assembly room and it's this way and we've got a whole team in there. Um, the assembly room involves uh, sewing and putting the pieces together and then also quality control. And uh, so we'll go over here and check out our folks working on that. So here we're coming into our assembly room and we have our volunteers working right now. So all the pieces that we are cutting out, we showed you get assembled like so. Um, and you can see how it goes together here. So there's the three pieces all getting put together. Now, once they are assembled, then they come over here to our quality control area. And here, we're just checking them all. We're putting them together. As, as we mentioned, there are uh, four pieces. I'm gonna show the four layers. We have the outer layer, which is this white one. Um, so that, that outer layer can be white or blue. So in this case, it's a white layer. And then we have two layers of the filter that are marked correctly so that they're correct. And then we have the paper layer here. So we put those layers together and then they go to be assembled together and sewn around. Um, and you can see over here at this station um, that, you know, we've, they're being assembled right here. These are the, the nose pieces that are going in right here with the wire in between. You can see the wire in there. And that's how that goes together. And then as we come down here at the very end, we see our finished product. And this is our finished product right here. So we have um, raised enough money to produce 10,000 masks. Um, our challenge is finding all the right materials. We do have most of the materials we need, we are still sourcing filters and that um, outer layer of that special surgical waterproof fabric. So um, we're still looking for that. Um, we would love to have the community help us out with volunteers. Like I said, we do have um, a screening process to go through. And so here is um, the information to our volunteer coordinator, Julie McMillan. You can email her and she'll get back to you and she's got questions for you and things she'll ask to make sure that all is good. And then if you have questions in general about the project in general, you can reach out to our team leaders, which is myself or Kathy Baldwin. And we would prefer email if possible um, so our phones don't get so overwhelmed. 
But uh, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have questions, please reach out to us. Please get in touch. And we look forward to really helping our medical community.